it's Norway time then in the logging truck. Actually, let's do it in uh, a different. Let's do it in sunset. Everybody uses morning. Let's go. This should hopefully be reasonably quick because uh, Norway is both a set of tracks that I actually know because I have actually played them in uh, career mode speedruns so it's actually tracks that I do indeed know rather than the rest of them I don't really know that well but also they're short they're short so we should be alright Oh dear. I feel like I just cut ahead on that corner. Like, I feel like I was put back further ahead than I left the track. But probably not five seconds ahead, so it probably don't really matter. And it'd still be faster in, like, a group, the proper speedrun. Real time speedrun. To, uh. Just nogging it. Boom.
I need to set my filter up properly, I just realised I can probably just hear the yeah, the fan in the background is just going brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
Let's get going. It is. This is indeed not strafing. Do you know what's even worse? I, Fivey got me to download a, a cool looking game called Cyberhook. Very defrag-esque. Um, no strafing. You automatically gain speed by holding W at a faster rate than you do with perfect strafe in uh, in Quake you just fucking start yeeting across the map you get a hook uh, you can't bind jump to right click you can't bind anything to right click in fact or left click um, default the only way to use those is use the default bindings I can't find the fucking bindings file because I really want to change it I oh, know these hookers it seems like a really fun game, but I'd, I'm going to have to rewire my brain to use, right, uh, to use fucking spacebar jump and to click the clickish to shoot. They will indeed be your ruin, and don't get into the hooker's green either. That's a paint colour. Which just sounds like a strand of weed. Like the drug weed. Or a bit of hooker's green. Let's try and get this shit fucking sorted. Well, that fix that then. Why if I talk really quietly like this? Fucking just bang on some noise suppression. You probably don't even know what British green is, though. Because that ain't it. British racing green is actually Irish shamrock green. And then it's usually dark. Uh, the reason for that is that the British racing colours were silver. Um, that's why they were called the Silver Arrows. Oh no, that was Mercedes. British colours were something else though. Maybe they were blue. No, Brit yeah, British cars were silver. I don't think they were called the Silver Arrows though. That is Mercedes. Unless they were and Mercedes just pinched that name after. But I'm pretty sure British cars were silver. And then... Uh, if you won the Trophy of Nations or whatever it was, I, can't, I think it was the Trophy of Nations, if you won this race, you host it the next year. At the time, racing was banned in the UK um, and the national speed limit was like four miles an hour. So we hosted it in Ireland and as a thank you, painted the cars their Irish colour and now it is British Racing Green, which like most things that Britain owns, is stolen from somewhere else. I've got a feeling there's some Irish people that are a bit pissed off about the whole British racing green thing. At my work we have a racing green that's not even the right colour. It's like completely wrong. BSA, Birmingham Small Arms. An arms manufacturer who, when 
selling guns wasn't enough, decided to sell bicycles. So popular were they, in fact, that that is now still pretty much the standard. Well, no, it is the standard. It's an, uh, the, the main ISO standard of bottom brackets, the bit where the pedals go through the thread pitch for the cups that the bearings run on. Is a BSA standard. It's 24 threads per inch. Left hand thread on the non drive side. So that you're always, well, however you're pedaling, you're always tightening. Uh, the bottom bracket so it doesn't just fall out. Same thing with pedals. If you ever wonder about pedals, they loosen to the back of the bike, they tighten to the front of the bike. No, that's the wrong way around. They tighten to the back of the bike, they loosen to the front. Maybe? No, they loosen to the back of the bike, yeah. Loosen to the back of the bike so that if the pedals suddenly stopped immediately, and your foot was stuck in it, the pedal would loosen, hopefully. But it also means they're self-tightening as you pedal, so if your pedals are a bit loose, just start riding. <laughs> they'll self-tighten. Yeah, this, this is my haunt away from strafing. It's my uh, a little bit of refuge at the minute. Little bit of refuge away from. But I'm still enjoying Defrag. I'm just kind of. I don't know what to do at the minute. So I'm going to play this. Because I have an idea of what to do in this. The current plan is the 1920 tracks that are in this game, I'm going to get on the leaderboard for every single one of them. Yeah, there's not many people online most of the times I'm going on. I have seen that. But I've been going on, I've also been going on RTG. Because I said to myself, after XWC, I was like, I, so uh, during XCWC and just before XCWC, I didn't play that much more. It was just the fact that I only, because during XCWC you only play one map, it meant that, like, I was, you know, you play one map for a week. It meant that I was actually getting the hang of the map, so I've decided to play RTG. Because then there's a good chance that I'll actually set a good time instead of just arsing off a time. So, that'll be good. I'll get back into it soon. I mean, we're only two or three days away from me having to record another... Um, XDF Records video, which is mad. Absolutely mad. Though, to be fair, it hasn't been long since the last one because of everything. Oh, fuck, I've got to do... yeah. I keep forgetting about the XDWC re results package. I need to do that. I need to sort that out this weekend. I'm off work next weekend, so if I... Please do remind me, because I will forget, because I'm a forgetful fucker. Make sure that I make the goddamn XDWC uh, package next week. Big jump, send it. Because it is a lot of work, to be fair. I should have started it already and just like plodded on with it, doing a bit every evening. But I've really got to get it out before it's been over a month since XUWC ended.
This is where I regret choosing sunset as my uh, time. Yeah, the, t the spectators always seem to get out the way. Not true of uh, real life, as you potentially would know, because it was the Argentine rally that caused the biggest controversy of uh, spectators then. Or at least it's the one usually pointed to as the biggest casualty number. Motherfuckers playing chicken with rally cars. Like, Jesus wept. The worst one was the... I'm pretty sure this was the Argentine rally because the two rallies that have the biggest jumps are the Argentine rally and the um, rally Finland. And it wasn't Finland. <laughs> it was very dusty. It might have been a couple of... There might have been one on like Rally Acropolis Greece, but the Argentine rally is... I know it for jumps, big jumps. Like there's tons of those. And it was very dusty and that sort of thing. Like it definitely wasn't Finland. It may have been Greece. But there was footage of people lying on the fucking jump track. Um like on the jumps and letting the cars jump over them. And you're like, dude, if someone comes over there with a mechanical you know, if they've blown up their suspension on one of the previous jumps in the race, they're just going to not jump it, and you're going to get ran over. On a trial of the route about 15 metres. 15 metres or 15 miles? Oh, yeah. Absolutely is um, just mad. And the people that stand on the outside of hairpin turns where the cars are just skidding around them and kicking rocks up the back. Like, I've been pelted with mud at cycling races. I wouldn't want to be pelted with mud. But I was stood kind of on the e exit of a corner. And people were just coming round it and attacking and sprinting and just spitting up mud from their tyres. And that were fucking dubious. Big clumps of mud coming off of small bicycle tyres at probably a maximum of... 25 kilometers an hour because it's it was pure mud and like slow speed coming out of a very very tight hairpin like two bike the tracks two bike widths wide you go shoulder to shoulder with someone to get past them everywhere oh you only experienced the shakedown shit Wee big jump. Yeah, it is mad. It is mad. I do need to learn where the off-limits, out-of-bounds zones are on this bit of the track. Because you can just cut straight line through all this, I think, somewhere. Because the out-of-bounds is very generous around here. It does look beautiful. It does. 
And I only really have three options. Like the best op so in this game there's two leaderboards per track. So six tracks per country, eight countries, each inside of each country, each track has a forwards and a reverse option. So twelve tracks per country, and then twenty-four leaderboards per country, because uh, you can do it in wet or dry. Or snow if you're in Norway. Um, the problem is, in the dry, you've got multiple options. You've got morning, afternoon, sunset, n fog, and night. Well, sunset, fog, and night fuck up your visibility more than morning and afternoon. And pretty much everyone just plays morning because it's much flatter than afternoon. But yes, it does look very, very nice across these fields of ice. This is a rally game, by the way. I should probably explain this. <laughs> this, this isn't the only car you can drive. It just so happens to be the one that I'm starting the challenge of completing every stage on. So that's why I've started with it and that's why I'm using it. It is bloody slow, difficult to steer, has five gears, somehow it's a logging truck with rear wheel drive, not quite sure how. No, this is the only truck. This is just a joke inclusion, you can't even play this in the career mode. And you can't you can't do career mode, you can't do custom rally, you can only do time trials with it. So single like you can't do actual proper rallies with this uh vehicle. Same as the Dakar truck, uh tri wheeler, which is like a little tuk tuk cart, and vans. Although there is one van in group B. As a joke inclusion. Oh shit. Nah, there are two trailer like models of this on the side of the road, but you don't actually get to drive one, unfortunately. The Dakar truck's probably the biggest fast meme car. Yeah. Like, you're going to have to actually do extra work for that shit. That would have really hit your shoulder.
There's a... You mean for the off-limits thing? For the out-of-bounds? There is a mod that shows you the out-of-bounds sections. But it looks so horrible. <laughs> and nobody nobody actually plays with it. One, because it's kind of considered a bit cheaty to play with it on. But also just because it's so difficult to actually drive with these uh, big old orbs. Because it's orbs rather than like actual boxes. It's more orbs of safety. Like this is a safe orb. And if you're outside of a safe orb for too long. There, so it's literally just straight down the middle of the road is this big old orb. That goes slightly off the road as well. And then on certain corners where you, you're likely to see corner cuts. That they'd put a red orb which is a like definitely can't cut marker. Yeah, there are a few few things that you think, hmm, that's a bit weird. But then it works really well. And you'd never know it wasn't unless you saw the mod that shows you what it was. You know. But it's, it's nice because it gives you a bit more leniency when you're like drifting out around a corner. And you go a bit too far out. Gives you a chance. And it probably was really easy for them to draw them up as well. Because you just have to draw a line straight down the centre of the road. And place, you know... I know that they wouldn't have actually used the dotted lines on the track. But, you know, every three or four you just place a dotted line. You'll notice how, like, I went off quite fast there. So I... I got... By the time I actually got reset, I was much further off the track than if I ever go off really slowly. Because I won't quite get into the off-road bit. It's a very comfy game. Very comfy game. I get to do something a little bit faster after this as well. Because I'm just going through all shit. At the minute, I'm just going through every day, doing one, um, one set of runs, so 12 tracks, at the minimum. Because it's going to take a while, it'll probably end up taking me about uh, a year. <laughs> Even if it's my most played game after Zenotic. About 160 hours, I reckon, in-game time. 
just for this challenge, so probably about 300 hours. <laughs> By the time that I'm including all the other shit that I'll do in the game. This is the only car I've ever gone through that section with and felt, I don't think I can max this car out. That's such a long straight section. There's got to be one in Kenya that I can do though. Once we get to Kenya, there's got to be a long enough straight section. Unless I can do it here. I've got a fifth gear by the way. You normally can flat out that corner and then continue it up the hill, but not here, apparently. It's almost like I'm driving a logging truck as a rally car. And then it wasn't particularly built for uh, high speed engagements. Hmm. I wonder. They'd have probably, again, like you said about the trailer, they'd have probably had to code it in. <laughs> the biggest amount of gears in the game is five. Even though some of the cars in real life have six gears in them. It is simply just group two has four gears. Everything else has five gears. I know, couldn't even be bothered to make a meme car. <sighs> Fuck it out. The fuck? You can apparently puncture in this game, but I've literally, honestly, never had it happen. That I've actually had a puncture to repair. It's never popped up in the corner to repair one. At least I don't think so. Maybe it has and I just haven't realised that's what it meant. <laughs> I thought it was like check engi engine coolant or something. Maybe that's what that red sign meant. But I don't know what the fuck just happened with me getting bumped up into the air. Well, that's all of them.
Eh, no, guay. 